Hey, Mike Pilcher coming to you at the next video. What I've got is a blank piece of metal panel. And I always like to drill the holes in the top and the bottom so you can hang them on the wall. And of course, if you're going to hang them the lengthways, you drill your holes at the top. But uh, this is going to be our top on this one. So what I've done to prepare this panel is I've took and sanded it with Scotch Brite. Then I've cleaned it with DX330. Then I tack ragged it. Then I sprayed my base coat black, just a GM, standard GM black. Um, 8555 is the number. Okay, now I've let that dry. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, mask it off. And what we're going to use is a 3M product. I love 3M products. And I think you can see that number right there. 06404. So it's 6404. And you can go right to any paint store and get this, or you can go to TCP Global Online. Uh, as I've mentioned before, the shipping is really quick. In two or three days, I've got the stuff right to me. So uh, let's just jump right in here. I've got my tack rag here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've let this paint dry for about 30 minutes now. So it's good and dry. We're 70 degrees, actually a little over 70 degrees, about 73 degrees here in my garage. So. We'll get this uh, wiped down with our tack rag and make sure we've got all the dust and everything off of it. Always go a couple different directions just to make sure that I've got everything. Okay, so now we're going to do the traditional flames in this video here. So I'm just going to pull this blue uh, and what this is it's eighth inch so I think you can maybe see that right there this is eighth inch so it's really thin and it works really good for turning corners and, and doing the things that we're going to do here in this video so let's find the end of it here and just jump right in here and get going now, traditional flames are pretty popular still. You know, the real fire is a lot more popular, but what we're going to do is we're going to do traditional flames. I'm going to show you some different techniques and different ways of doing these, and then we're going to we'll actually uh, come in when we're done, and we'll pinstripe. So I'm going to show you how to pinstripe. So what I'm doing is, is I'm just kind of stretching on this. So I'm holding my finger here and kind of stretching on this tape, and as I make my curves, I'm just taking my other forefinger and just pulling this around corners and just take your other hand and just kind of push along the way. And of course, you can pull this back up and And so you can just pull it and break it. So if you make a mistake, you don't like your curves, you can always pull it right back up. I'll just show you. See there, I don't like that, so I'm just going to pull that up. And just read it. Very, very simple. I don't do near as many of these style flames anymore as I used to. I used to do a ton of these. Then the real fire came out and the real fire is just uh, so much more popular. But we still get uh, some people want to do these once in a while. Just if you're happy with them, then just kind of go around with your finger and just kind of push that down. might make one more here and what we'll do here is we'll overlap 
will overlap one of them. I'll show you. That overlap and, and stripe it and make it look right. Make it look like it's over the top of the other one. Just like anything else, there are so many different shapes and styles of these that you can do. This is probably going to be one of your most popular styles here. Now what we'll do is we'll bring this other one over in and connect it to this one. Now I don't particularly like this, so what I'm going to do, let me show you how to fix that. See, to me, that looks a little bit better now. I'm going to bring this one around. And there again, it's your your flames, you can do whatever you want. There's no, it's kind of like the others, there's no really right or wrong. Okay, for this demonstration, that's probably going to be good enough. Now what we'll do is we'll take our, uh, our transfer paper. I'll keep mine wrapped up in plastic so that we don't get dust and dirt and stuff in it. So it's always wrapped up. Keeps it nice and clean. This is all, all stuff I'm getting from TCP Global. I used to get.
get a lot of this stuff from my local paint shop. They don't have enough custom painters anymore doing a lot of this stuff, so see what I've got is a roll here. I'm just going to pull this as sticky on one side. But they don't have enough custom painters anymore to keep this stuff in stock. And so I've just found myself having to get it from other places, which is fine. But when I order from TCP Global, what I'll do is order enough stuff that wants to work. It makes the shipping well worthwhile if you just order one item. Sometimes the shipping is a bit high for just that one item. So I'd much rather just order. So what I'm doing is just pulling this down and go back up and get some of these wrinkles out. You can use a squeegee for this, which works really good. Just kind of iron that out. Well, here's what I love about that blue tape that we just put on, is I can see it right through this. Now, I don't know if you can see it here in the, in the video. Let me get this up a little bit closer but you can see right through this you see this blue tape below it now I've also got clear I've got this same stuff in clear we'd use it but uh, it don't stick near as good as this white transfer paper so that's why I'm using the white We're just going around these blue lines, the blue tape that we just laid, and iron them out. Okay. Now, you can use an X-Acto knife, or you can use a, uh, a razor blade. I like the X-Acto knife the best, so that's what we're going to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow these blue tape lines and I'm cutting right on top of the blue. And by cutting right on top of the blue, I'm just kind of aim at the middle of that blue. But by cutting on that blue tape line, you don't have to worry about so much going through and scoring the metal. So I'm only pushing hard enough to cut the transfer paper. I don't want to push too hard and go clear through the, the blue tape. I don't want to do that at all. Now, right here, this is where these two meet. So I'm going to Start there and follow this on down. Okay, so right here, and you may not be able to see this in this video very good, but you'll see it here in just a second. And it's really cool doing this style of flames. And when we do these, we normally, we overlap them quite a bit. Like I've overlapped these two. I'll show you exactly how to make these look right. So when you overlap them, Then we go back and stripe it. We'll do a little bit of detailing and shadowing with the airbrush. And they're going to look like they're right up on top of each other. I 
then a SWAT team vehicle, which was an old ambulance. We used the same style flames all over the front and then came back on the bed with it. Big, big project. But man, it looked good. We had a lot of these overlapping each other and just had a great look to it. Okay, so now you just use your little exacto knife here and kind of pull out your your center because what we're going to do here is we're going to open up the center of these flanks. We're going to leave the rest mask off and I'm going to show you some things that you can do to make your flames look really, really neat. You'll want to go around again and push push all this down. Because see what we don't want is we don't want overspray coming from here underneath this. So underneath the transfer paper, what we'll do is go around and just push that all down again. Make sure we've got all those edges pushed down. Because we don't want that overspray creeping up underneath there. You can fix it, but this causes more work more time and if we can do a good job masking everything off we don't have to go back and fix nothing time is money so makes your project look a lot cleaner too okay so there's Now, if I was laying this out on a motorcycle or something, I would I would come out of these and just keep on and just keep on doing this same style here. These real long ones is probably the most uh, most common, the, the most favorite of everybody. Okay, so we've got that laid out. Now, what we're going to do. I'm going to show you what to do inside of these to make them look a little bit different than everybody else's. Just some cool things. Of course, you can put skulls in there. You can get, you know, some little stencils that's got little skulls, and you can put skulls all the way through them. I've done that. Put skulls all the way through these. Pretty neat. Now, right there, where those blue tapes overlap, We've got to fix that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to cut these. So they meet each other. And just cut just hard enough to go through that blue, that blue tape but not score the metal below it. We don't want to get in a score a metal panel. Because it causes a lot more work to fix it. Okay, so now I've got that center opened up. So these two stripes where they meet each other, overlap each other, right there, they're opened up. So we can go 
do our paint work, and we can come back and do the striping. We we'll cover all that up. Okay, so now what we need for this project, saran wrap. This is just a cheap Dollar General saran wrap. It's not real good. You can use the better stuff if you want. Um, I have. There's not a whole lot of difference. The better stuff almost sticks too good. So, in some instances, the uh, cheaper stuff actually works a little better. So I'm just tearing off some. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm just tearing off my handy uh, saran wrap. So see, I've got it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of put it over here in this panel. I'm going to mix up some paint. We're going to put it on here. use some chrome yellow. This is a black background so this chrome yellow will look pretty good. So what I've got is chrome yellow. Just give the bottle a couple shakes. Put that in my airbrush. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to over reduce this. So I'm going to put more reducer than normal because I want it to stay wet a little longer. I'll show you what. And you get your saran wrap. Now you can actually fold this. You can do it a couple ways. You can spray on here, but in order to keep this uh, super wet, unless you got somebody helping you do this, you're going to have to reduce it quite a bit. Spray this, get it all wet. Probably want to use a bigger gun so you can do it fast. And then take your saran wrap and lay it out on there, kind of iron it out, and then pull it off. Get some cool effects. Now we're going to do it another way, which when you're working by yourself is really probably about the best way. So I'm just going to fold this up a little bit. I just kind of got it folded up. Got quite a few wrinkles in it, which is kind of what I want. So I don't want to fold it perfect. I actually want wrinkles in it. Okay, now here we go. I'm opening up the airbrush. And what I mean by opening it up, I'm pulling the trigger back a lot. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling this trigger way back, wide open, and spraying this paint on there really heavy. Okay, here we go. That's really heavy. I just push that on there, kind of iron it out. Okay. I'm really putting a lot of paint on there. I'm pulling the trigger way back. And really open it up to dump that paint on there quick. And while that's wet, you just put your saran wrap on there. If you don't like an area, just go back over, wet it down some more. Go over it. This is a pretty neat effect. And you can add other colors to this. So there's a lot you can do with it. Another cool one, we'll do it in another video is instead of using this, you can use aluminum foil. It gives it a whole different look. You do it the same way. But it's a whole different look.
See, I'm really putting the paint on there heavy. Why that paint's still wet. You come in here, put your saran wrap or aluminum foil, whichever you use, and then pull it off. Let me get you up closer so you can see. You see right here? I'm going to put a little bit more on there and just kind of redo it. So watch this. Put some more right there. See, I like the looks of that better. So I want quite a bit of black showing through because it just gives it some really cool looks. This don't have to be perfect. This is custom paint. So in custom painting, um, that's one of the things about custom painting, nothing's perfect. So you see, cheap tricks, very cool effects. Anybody can do what I've just did here. So now what we'll do is we'll take this yellow out. And I'm going to uh, run a little reducer through this. Dump in the paint back in my bottle here. And I'm going to put... Uh, black in it. So what I've got is my my GM black. Dumping that in my airbrush here. Don't need a whole lot. Now you can figure out where you want. See, I'm, what I'm going to do is kind of make these really pop up and look like they're standing up off the panel. You can leave them just like this, which is fine. Or I'm going to show you some things that you can do to really enhance them. So around these curves, I've got my black. You could kind of come around these curves on one side. I'm not going to go clear around. I'm just, I'm aiming on the tape, so on the tape line, and letting my overspray drift over onto my, my flame. So I'm actually not wanting to get a whole lot on the, on the black itself. So now here you figure out which one you want to overlap. Let me raise the camera up. I don't know if you're seeing this is good. So right here where these two overlap. Right here. You got to figure out which one you want to be up on top of the other one. I think what we're going to do on this one is we'll have this one up on top of that one. So what we can do is come right across here. So we're putting our shadow below this one because this one we're going to have up on top of this one. So we'll have this one up on top of that one. So we'll put this shadow right there like it's on the bottom of that. Wavy. We 
could actually make this thing a little wavy. You can just run some lines through there. Uh, give it that kind of that folded look. Matter of fact, all this do one. Just to show you, I'm going to run a line right through here. And it's going to give it kind of a, a folded wavy look. And we probably wouldn't do this if it was on a motorcycle, we might. Depends on what the customer wanted, but I'm just going to show you some different things that you can do to really dress these up. everybody else's. Going around through these edges here. In my daughter's car, we've done this. She kind of came up with the design. We've done something similar to this. It was more of a, oh, you know, more of the gothic style. Want to kind of she called it the bubble, the bubble flame. She kind of wanted that bubbly look, so that's just kind of some of what we did to hers. Okay, I'm gonna dump this black out. At this point, you just decide what you want. If you wanted to add some more colors, let this dry good, and you could come right in there with like maybe some red or whatever you desire and go right on top of that. So you let this dry good, at least an hour, and then go back in there and just repeat that with another color and, and new saran wrap. Okay, we've got the airbrush cleaned out. I'm going to add just a little bit of white. I'm going to reduce it down quite a bit. I don't want it real strong. We'll reduce it now and give it a couple shakes. I'll kind of test it over here. And I see it's pretty, pretty wet because I put more reducer on it. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll just kind of dress it up with a few highlights. What I've done here is I put a light highlight coming out in the middle. That's going to give it more of that rounded, that rounded look. So I'm going to go across there, we can go across there a little bit. And that kind of gives that ripple effect. And on these tips, you can put little white points. So right up in the tip, you can really make white points. And that's pretty much pretty much it. I'm not going to put other colors in here. We could. But I've showed you how to do this so you can do the other colors. Like I said, you're just going to repeat the same process with other colors.
was a little bit right here. Okay, now we're going to, because this is going to be on top of that one, we can come in here and put a highlight right across the top of this one. Remember, this one's going to overlap this one. Okay. Now let's pull this off and see, uh, see what we've got here. Well, you can see it in the video, but we're already starting to get a lot of a 3D look to it. Now, what I'm doing on this tape is I'm pulling down and I'm kind of pulling in to the stripe just a little bit, which acts kind of like a knife and it kind of helps knock down those sharp edges where you don't have near as much of a you have a clean line when you pull the, paper, the tape and stuff off. I already see a few places where We had a little bit of paint creep under, but we can fix that. There's places along here where paint has creeped under. Not that big of a deal. Like right there. We can fix all that. We can go back in there some black and touch it up. How well you can see see that but it's really getting that bubbly look like these are really rounded standing up off the panel now in the video these look dark I'm looking at the screen right now and it looks dark now in here in person it's not and it's got kind of a kind of a wavy looking effect so it's got a really cool effect to it Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna stripe this. So I'm gonna move right on through here. Remember I told you before using a magazine for your palette? So just got a just an old magazine. And I'm gonna uh, put my paint right on here and use this for my palette. I like the magazines the best for uh, for doing this. Okay, I think I'll use I think I'll use silver. I'll tell you what, we're going to use purple. We're going to use lavender because my other stuff's down my paint storage, so I don't want to go down there to get it. So we'll, uh, we'll use lavender. Now, what this is is House of Colors. 
I've used their striping paint. I've been using PPG here lately. This is just some that I've got right out here with me. But I like PPG pretty good. And what it is, it's just a striping paint that my, my guys custom mix for me. And anybody can do this. But you can also get this right through uh, TCP Global. You can order it right there online, get the different colors. They're small, so they're not near as expensive. And this stuff will last you for quite a while if you keep it sealed up good. It'll last you uh, for quite a while. So I'm just kind of opening this can up. stubborn. That's what happens if you don't clean the edges of these. You're going to have this trouble right here. It's not been open for a while so it's trying to stick. So obviously I didn't clean it out good enough. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a stick in it giving it a good stir and I'm going to pull my stick right up out of the can I'm going to lay it on my palette here and I'm just going to take my stick and just wipe it off on my palette like that. Now, I'm going to take my reducer and put over here, kind of around it. I'm going to get my little sword striper brushed out of here. What I've got is I've got all kinds of different brushes, different designs that I use. So I'm going to use one of these sword striper brushes. I don't know if you can see it or not. This one here is a uh, Excalibur. It's just a pinstriping brush. You can kind of see how it's tapered. You can get these at uh, TCP Global as well. Okay, here's how we're going to load the brush. I'm going to take the brush. We're just going to go back and forth like this to load this brush. And you're going to kind of feel a little bit of a drag. You should feel a little drag on it. So we're getting over here in some of this reducer. Get some of this fresh, thicker paint. And then back and forth, back and forth to load that brush. Okay, see how that's kind of loaded up? So we're going to go over here on the clean part. Back and forth. Really get that brush loaded up nice. Okay, let me move this camera over here. Out of my way, but where you can still see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start. You got to figure out on your overlapping here. So we know we want this one overlap. So we're just going to follow this line right on around. You have to load the brush again. Now what we're going to do in this video on this one here, I'm going to show you how not just to pull the straight line, but I'm going to show you how to also do something which is one of my favorites. I learned this from Craig Frazier. 
when I was with him out in Utah, and it's called slash strapping. I'm loading the brush again here. And it's actually one of my very favorites. And believe it or not, it's actually a uh, a stripe that anybody can pull. I'm just kind of going to go around these here with uh, kind of a straight line. And then we'll come back. And we'll do like a slash strap. You gotta be careful where you start and where your fingers are gonna be so that you're not getting into your work. Cause I like to drag a finger over the side over here. So I, I like to use this finger right here and drag it and use it as a guide. So if you're not really careful, you'll end up in your paint. I'm going to put a little bit more reducer in here. Load the brush up again here. Now on this brush, you'll see here, see there's a fatter part right here. I'm right-handed, so this is going to go out. So this narrower side in by my thumb is next to my body. This is out to the side away from me. And I'm actually holding it like this. And I let the butt of it rest right up in here. Okay, now here's the slash part of this stripe. So we just kind of you can do I'm just barely touching this because I don't want real heavy, heavy lines. I'm just barely dragging it. You see, I'm kind of going a couple different angles. And up here, we're going to make this come on out farther. The slash driving is a lot of fun. Like I mentioned, anybody can do it. So if you're worried about it, you can't pull straight lines, well, don't worry about it because you don't have to. So I'm just lightly touching with the brush because I don't want to push down on hard. I don't want a big old heavy fat line. You know, some people love this the slash stripe, and some people actually hate it. One of my daughters, she thinks it, uh, I think her word was it looks sloppy. When I see Craig, when I seen Craig Frazier doing this and teaching us how to do it, I, I thought, man, that's just pretty cool because, you know, these are custom, you know, some of the stuff you're doing is, it's custom, you know, it, and everybody just keeps doing the same old thing, straight lines. That's what I loved about this, because it's so much different. Not everybody's going to have it, you know? I'm going to add some more reducer. Loading my brush up again.
I kind of like the ones that's got the kind of long tail on them, fairly skinny. Now right here where these two meet, you've got to be a little bit more precise. Because you don't want that to come over and on top of the other one. A little more reducer on my paint here. Loading up my brush again. Okay, so right there where they meet, just kind of coming in and getting that. And see, I don't want it to come up on top of this this stripe here. So I'm coming right to this stripe that I pulled through this one. I'm coming right into it. So I don't want to have my paint up on top of that other one. That other stripe. Something I've noticed here is it's I'm doing this video, so I'm holding this palette in one hand and doing the striving with the other hand, which is very awkward because I'm normally, I set this down and work off my stand next to me. That way I've got both hands and I use the other hand on the, on the side of my arm to kind of uh, help control the brush a little bit. So it's a bit awkward. More reducer. The striping paint dries out pretty quick, so you gotta use quite a bit of reducer. The reducer soaks into that magazine so quick. So now I'm just going to take this, go on out a little farther, and as I get out to the end, I'm just lightening up on my brush where I just barely, barely makes a line. I want that to go out. It's like a little tail. I just want it to go out to a little tail at the end.
Okay, so we've got that covered pretty good. Now I've got some around here I didn't get. The curves are a little tricky. It's just another one of the deals you just got to play with it. Have fun with it. Okay, I'm going to set this down. I'm going to turn the camera so you can get a good look at it. stripe looks blue in this camera. It's called lavender. It's, it's kind of a real purple look. Got a pretty neat look to it. Now right up in there, we can go right along there. With black, to touch it up. But what I'm going to do to make this one stand up a little bit more, I've still got white in my airbrush, so on top of this stripe here, where it's on top, we'll put a little bit of white right in the center of that. I'm up here very close. There, I put a little bit of a dot. Because I want that to really stand up off this other one that's underneath it. That's basically... Basically it. Got a pretty cool look. So we got a couple places up here where the uh, we have a little paint on it. All we have to do is take our airbrush, switch colors, and right there. Take a little bit of black and just go right along there and just massage, and just kind of lightly blow a little bit of black over that, and that's that's gone. So that's pretty much it for uh, for this video. A couple highlights right here. You see, we can also do this. We can put. Like a little dot right there. That'll make that really stand up. We can put some of the places where you want to really jump out and stand up. You just put a couple of dots with your highlight. And it'll really stand up and look good. Okay. Next video, what we'll do is we'll do real fire over on the side over here and that'll uh, be a whole different look that allow you to see the two side by side so practice practice is what's going to make you perfect so we'll see you in the next video